press that third channel and I'll activate the switch. Again to stop This is my newest project using the Agent 390 platform. If you are interested in building this exact project, I will try to provide links in the video description to all of the parts I have used. My main goal with this project was to build an RC tank with a Nerf gun turret attached to it. The firing of the gun has to be controlled completely remotely, so in my case the third channel of my Flysky GT3B radio. The gun I use is a Dart Zone Scorpion. I bought mine from my local Walmart. The reason why I chose this gun is that the flywheels that are used to shoot the darts are turned on using an on and off switch, instead of using a button that needs to be held down like most nerf guns. This will just make the project a whole lot easier, as I won't need a fourth channel to press a momentary switch, because my radio only has three channels. So in order to turn on the gun, all I have to do is slide the switch into the on position. The gun is powered by six AA batteries. In order to make the gun's firing mechanism controlled entirely remotely, I gutted out the trigger and extracted the momentary switch that the trigger presses inside of the gun, by opening it up. I then extended the momentary switch by desoldering it from the gun, and soldering it with a much longer 18 gauge wire. The wire extends from inside the gun, allowing it to be accessed from outside of the gun. After testing the momentary switch, it worked perfectly fine. My next challenge was pushing that switch with the third channel on my radio. I decided to do this using a servo. I took a servo from one of my old RC cars. I then mounted it on the chassis plate from another one of my old RC cars. The chassis plate is a top plate from an HPI Firestorm 10T. I mounted the plate to the robot chassis using zip ties. I screwed the servo and the momentary switch from the nerf gun into the plate. In order for the servo horn to hit the momentary switch when the third channel is pressed, I had to file it down about halfway because it was too big. I then screwed in a small Phillips head screw into the horn, which perfectly hits the momentary switch when the third channel is activated. This allows me to fire the gun when I press the third channel from my FlySky radio, because the servo is hooked up to the third channel on the receiver. Now whenever I press the third channel on my radio, the servo is activated and it presses the momentary switch, which activates the nerf gun's firing mechanism, allowing me to fire off the darts from the belt hooked up to the gun. The darts are loaded directly into the belt. I mounted the gun by first bolting two 1 and 3 8 inch, 3 feet long metal plates to the chassis, simply using a couple nuts and bolts on each side. I then bent the metal plates to the proper shape. I bought the metal plates, nuts, and bolts from the Home Depot. I mounted the gun by cutting two slits into each top end and threading a zip tie through it and closing it off on the metal plates. This proved to be extremely secure after I performed further testing. Okay, let's move on to the robot. As I've stated earlier, the platform is an Octobotics Agent 390 tracked robot. It can be bought from Servo City as a kit that has to be assembled. The kit includes the entire robot platform and two 313 RPM planetary gear motors. This robot can house up to six motors, but for now I have stuck with two, as it is plenty fast with a lot of torque. You will have to provide your own motor controller, as it is not included in the kit. The motor controller I use for this robot is the Roboclaw 2x60 amp, which is pretty much overkill for this project because it supports up to 34 volts, and I am only using 12 volts. Nonetheless, it's an amazing motor controller and I highly recommend it. Since I'm using a Flysky GT3B, which is a pistol grip radio, I programmed the Roboclaw for mix mode. I am powering the Roboclaw with the z 8000 milliamp 100 c LiPo battery. Since this is a LiPo battery, I had to also set the Roboclaw to LiPo mode. I'm measuring the LiPo voltage to make sure it doesn't get too low by using a voltage meter and a low voltage alarm that is hooked up to the LiPo's balance plug. 
All right, I thought I'd give you guys a quick up close overview of the robot. Now, in order to load the gun, I just basically stick, in this case I'm using a Nerf dart, into the belt. And that's all, and you just close this off. There's 20 darts in this belt. I they have bigger belts, but right now I'm just gonna use 20 darts. And right now it's pretty much loaded. So, here I got the radio. Now, it's, it's pretty simple, go forward if you just press forward, so like this. <laughs> Backwards. And it's gonna be a little bit hard for me to show because it's one hand, because I'm recording. But like that. You can also, well, it's a little bit hard for me to do, but you can turn and press the throttle at the same time. Do it like that. And you get the picture. So you can do 360 turns and smaller turns like that. And it is pretty fast. As you can see. Now, I have, let me put the controller down, I have the battery mounted with zip ties as well as the uh, motor controller right there. As you can see, it's mounted all with zip ties. And you can see the servo plate right here. It's mounted on, on this uh, old chassis plate. We've got the receiver, the three, the three channel receiver. And I also have a voltage meter hooked up here so I just know when the battery is low on voltage so I don't you know damage it or anything like that. Now, in order to use the gun, Hold on, before I do that, let me just show you. So this is the third channel on my radio. When I press it, you can see the servo moves. And that servo presses the, the firing switch for this gun. And you can see it's just pretty much hooked up using this wire right here. And it's hooked up straight into the gun. I just extended it. I put a little electrical tape to secure it. You can see it a little bit better right through here. And that hooks up to that little green switch. So whenever I do press the, the third channel, that servo presses that switch, allowing me to fire the gun. Now, if I want to use the gun, all I gotta do, it's gonna be a little bit loud, but I just turn it on using the switch. And you can see the flywheels are on because this is a flywheel gun. And as you can see, now let's go ahead and fire some darts. Let me go up a little bit closer so you can see it better. Right here is good. Alright, so, you press that third channel and I'll activate the switch. And it starts firing. As you can see. And I'm going to stop it. You press it again to stop firing. I think I, I still got a few darts left in it. So let's face it over here. I'm going to do a quick 360 turn. Oops. Right here. And once again, I'm going to press this button, which is going to pretty much activate that turbo. So there we go. And it's firing. And that's all 20 darts. To stop it, I just press it again. Like that. Now, let's drive it over here. Running over darts. So, turn off the gun, it's just simply pushing that switch to the off position. Like that. Let me move it over here, I don't want to damage my darts. And that's pretty much it. That's how it's set up the drive and use the gun. Pretty simple, like I said, just using that switch hooked up from the gun, using that servo to press it. Pretty simple setup. All right, that just about wraps up the video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to respond as soon as possible. If you're looking to build this project for yourself, I'll try to link all the parts I have used in the video description. Um, thank you guys once again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you excuse me, I'm gonna go clean up all these darts. See you guys.